Hello there. I want to take this time to invite you and your family to join me for the next half hour as we read, we study, and we meditate upon the Word of God together. Do you realize how important it is to keep the lines of communication open between you and God through the act of prayer? And prayer itself can be defined as joining forces with a fellowshipping with God. And a successful prayer life on your part will enable you to carry out God's will upon the earth. And this is why Jesus Christ, the Son of God himself, was so successful in accomplishing all that God had sent him to earth to do because of the discipline he exercised in his prayer life. And while Jesus was here on earth, he taught much about prayer, and perhaps the best known of his teachings on prayer was the often repeated, the Lord's Prayer. And in it, this brief prayer, we find a pattern for prayer which Jesus gave to his disciples. And those helpful suggestions, as well as the prayer itself, can be found in the 6th chapter of St. Matthew and the 5th through the 13th verse. And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to the Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Therefore, do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it's amazing what God can do with your problems when he has them. And you turn it over to him to work it out for you. For when that happens, you don't have to worry. When you cast your burdens on the Lord, for he takes great pleasure in helping you solve your pressing and most urgent problems. And this can be verified by reading 1 Peter, the 5th chapter, and the 7th verse. Give all your worries and cares to God, for he cares about what happens to you. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who is the second person of the Trinity of God, is equally concerned about your needs and wants. And like God, the Father, he wants to help you also. For when you honor the Son, you also honor the Father. And this truth is revealed to us in 1 John the fifth chapter and the eleventh through the fifteenth verse. And this is what God has testified. He has given us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. So whoever has God's Son has life, and whoever does not have the Son does not have life. I write this to you who believe in the Son of God, 
so that you may know you have eternal life. And we can be confident that he will listen to us whenever we ask him for anything in line with his will. And if we know he is listening when we make our request, we can be sure that he will give us what we ask for. And so I can now be confident that the Lord will hear and answer my prayer request, which is also the title of my sermon. Jesus, teach me how to pray. You know, there is a key to prayer without which we can get nowhere. And the key will unlock the doors and the windows of heaven and grant our every need. And we can read about this key in the 16th chapter of St. John and the 23rd and 24th verses. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. The truth is, you can go directly to the Father and ask him, and he will grant your requests because... You use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name and you will receive and you will have abundant joy. And it's important that you realize that Jesus Christ is our mediator, intercessor, advocate, and Lord. Jesus stands between us and God. And in no place in the Bible is it recorded that Jesus told his disciples to pray to him. They were always told to pray to God in his name. Therefore, if we wish to be sure our prayers are reaching the throne of God, we must come according to the rules laid down in the word of God. Now, it's true we can tell Jesus how much we love him. But when it comes to praying and asking, we must ask the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. And there is real joy in knowing that God will answer our prayers. For if you are worrying and trying to figure it out yourself, you hinder God from helping you for then you are carrying the burden instead of letting God carry it. In fact, if you are worrying about that problem, it will do very little to pray. For you are not praying in faith. Well, if faith is of such importance in us receiving our miracle from God, then how do we get faith? Well, you can know that answer by reading the 11th chapter of Hebrews and the 6th verse, as well as the 10th chapter of Romans and the 17th verse. So you see, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. And in the 10th chapter of Romans, in the 17th verse, it says, Yet faith comes from listening to this message of good news, the good news about Christ. And real faith is built upon the Word of God. For the Word builds into us confidence and assurance. And we can also be confident knowing that we have a priest in heaven, who's making intercessions on our behalf. For Jesus Christ is that high priest. And if the Lord be for us, then who can be against us and have any success in stopping us from achieving and doing the will of God? To illustrate this point, we need only turn to the fourth chapter of Hebrews and the 14th through the 16th verse. That is why we have a great high priest who has gone to heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us cling to him and never stop trusting him. 
This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. For he faced all of the same temptations we do, yet he did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it. It must never be forgotten that Almighty God rules the universe. His hands are always on the controls of human affairs. God is present everywhere in the concerns of time, for God rules the world just as he rules the church. He rules them through prayer. And in dealing with mankind, nothing is more important to God than prayer. Failure to pray is failure in all of life. It is only by prayer that God can help people. He or she who does not pray robs themselves of God's help. We must pray to God if love for God is to exist. And prayer is a sense of a need for God and a call for God to supply that need. How we estimate and place prayer is how we estimate and place God. To give prayer a secondary place is to make God secondary in life's affairs. To substitute other forces for prayer excludes God's and materializes the whole movement. And prayer is absolutely necessary if we want to carry out God's work properly. For it's important that you realize that nothing is done well without prayer. For the simple reason that it leaves God out of the work. And even in our pursuit of being a soul winner, Praying men and women are a necessity in carrying out God's plan for saving sinners. God established prayer as a divine ordinance, and therefore we are to pray. The fact that God has so often employed men and women of prayer to accomplish his plans clearly proves we are to pray. For you see, God has placed himself under the law of prayer. He is induced to work among people in a way that he does not work if they do not pray. Prayer takes hold of God and influences him to work on our behalf. For prayer puts God to work in all things prayed for. And even God's Son, Jesus Christ, has committed himself to the force of prayer. This is illustrated for us in the 14th chapter of St. John, in the 13th and 14th verse, as well as the 15th chapter of St. John and the 7th verse. You can ask for anything in my name and I will do it, because the work of the Son brings glory to the Father. Yes, Ask anything in my name and I will do it. But if you stay joined to me and my words remain in you, you may ask any request you like and it will be granted. And the work of God stops or advances according to the strength of prayer. And God bestows his great blessings on his children when they seek them along the avenue of prayer. You will find that Jesus puts himself and God at our command in prayer, for he promises to come